Hi everyone. So welcome back to the video series and oh it's another black background video which means that we're focusing on thinking and problem solving and today we're going to be talking about imagination and the videos that I'm recording right now are accompanying my course in innovation practice at Niagara College and it's really challenging this year. Um, with fall 2020, we aren't teaching in person. And so we're switching our modes of learning away from a lot of the Socratic teaching practice. So uh, Socratic teaching practice is where we have a lot of conversation and dialogue in the classroom to help people think and learn by conversation. And I don't have the ability to have the same richness of conversation through the online platform. So we're being really, really creative here. Um, Today's video, we're going to be talking about imagination, and oftentimes when I'm having that Socratic dialogue with the students, I talk about some of my own experiences where I derive my own sense of imagination as an innovator, as a product developer, as, as someone who helps other people and organizations in that process as well. So part of today is just going to be me telling you a little bit about some places that I derive my own sense of imagination. But the purpose of this video is to help you think about and reflect on your own sense of imagination and derive your own strategy to find the things in life that inspire you and inspire your imagination. So my, my teenage daughter walked in while I was prepping these slides and she said, oh, well, that's, that's the little prince. And you're, you're absolutely right. One story in The Little Prince. And again, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. It's one of the most famous stories ever in um, creative nonfiction, or a creative fiction, pardon me. It is a fiction book. It is written by Antoine Saint-Exupéry, who is a French writer, and he wrote it as sort of a, almost a dream sequence of crashing his plane into the desert and thinking about what was important in life and having this little prince, this little fellow appear out of nowhere to have a conversation with him about the things that are important in life. He was reflecting on drawing. The little prince had asked him, Dessez-moi un mouton, please draw me a sheep. And he was reflecting on when he was a child, how he used to enjoy drawing and then drawing suddenly became something that gave him anxiety. Why? Because this specific story about the hat, he drew this drawing, the, this, the piece of the drawing that's on the top half, and he went up to some adults and said, look at my drawing, isn't it the most terrifying drawing you have ever seen? And the adults looked at him and looked at the drawing and said, well, it's a hat. What do you think? This is, it's just a hat. Get out of my, get out of my sight. I, I don't have time for this. And the little boy, who, who was the aviator at the time, just felt defeated and didn't feel like drawing anymore. Meanwhile, his whole intent was, it wasn't a hat, it was actually a boa constrictor who had eaten an elephant, and he felt it was so profound and terrifying as a drawing. This story is important to me because I have the chance to work with so many young people and so many businesses who are really interested in innovating, and Oftentimes they'll come up to me and they'll say, look at my hat, look at, or not look at my hat, look at my drawing, isn't this really cool? And it's really important for me to not be that adult who goes in and says, oh, well, I don't waste my time. I need to be the adult who says, tell me more about this drawing. Tell me, tell me what you are seeing in this whole picture and give me more of the story because it's so easy to be that, that first adult and say, get out of my sight, I don't have time for this, and defeat the, the creativity that's in those people who really want to be doing more. And it's so easy to have that sense of defeat instead of trying to build each other up in our creative processes. So I do need to make sure that that's important in my practice, taking the time to hear the story properly and get the full perspective so that when someone walks in with the drawing of a hat, I realize that it's actually 
a scary elephant and a snake. You're going to think all my stories are about elephants and snakes, but uh, I enjoy poetry and, again, the lessons that can be learned and the, the nuggets of wisdom that are there. One of the most uh, influential poets ever was a, a Persian poet from the medieval period. His name was Rumi, and he wrote stories that still infiltrate into a lot of um, Asian and Western culture through the really profound stories that are told. Um, this one, I recently used this in a, in a food safety audit that I did because I was in that team meeting debriefing on the different ideas and everyone was just in there arguing and I said, wait a second, let's stop for a moment. You are, you are like the story of Rumi's elephant and let's step back and take a different perspective. In the story of Rumi and uh, er, the elephant, an elephant comes wandering into town in the middle of the night and the townspeople step outside and they say, well, there's a problem here. We've got to figure out what this is. And one person in the dark reaches out and says, well, it's a rope. And another person reaches out and go, no, it's a big, huge column of wood. Another person reaches out and says, no, it's a, it's a really strong, muscular snake. Another person reaches out and says, no, it's a smooth seashell. And finally, the last person walks out and brings a lantern and says, wait a second, let's, let's actually step back and take a look. No, it's an elephant. And that idea of stepping back and looking at the bigger picture and figuring out what is the light that will illuminate the whole picture, that I think is a really, really important piece of the puzzle. It's also important to realize that when looking at a big problem, Everyone has a different perspective and a different, a different lens that they're looking at it from. So to not jump to conclusions and get angry, but instead to say, wait a second, can I, instead of being a townsperson, can I be the, the wise person who steps back and turns on the light and looks at the big picture? I like, I like that story and I, and I, <laughs> I have a drawing of it that I drew from that audit. It, it, again, stories are where I derive a lot of my management practice and a lot of my creative thinking. One last story that I'll bring up here is Paulo Coelho's Alchemist. He wrote it originally in um, Portuguese, uh, Brazilian Portuguese, but uh, it's been also translated to most languages around the world. Very famous book. And uh, one quote that comes from it is, the simple things are also the most extraordinary things and only the wise can see them. Wisdom, we'll talk about, we'll talk about how do you gain knowledge and um, how important it is to just go out and expose yourself to lots of things, whether that's through reading or going out and talking to other people, uh, learning from one another, asking good questions. But wisdom comes from experience and experience just comes from exploration and exploration just comes from opening yourself up to intellectual curiosity. A lot of people say The Alchemist is a bit like a, it reads a little bit like a self-help book, but it is a, it is a piece of creative fiction. Um, he wrote it uh, a few years back, and the premise of the story is there's a, a teenage boy who is in Spain, and he has this dream while uh, lying in the ruins of the local church. And he has this dream that if he were only to travel to the pyramids of Egypt, he would discover a most profound treasure. And so he uh, sets off with his sheep on this adventure and travels across the sea to North Africa and meets all these different people along his way that each of those people shares a bit of wisdom with him about understanding themselves and understanding their treasure that's a, that's around them. So um, as he's traveling along, he needs to raise some money. And so he goes and reaches out to the king and King Solomon says to him, well, young man, if you would just take care of my house today, I would gladly pay you. Uh, among your tasks, you need to go and take care of the yard. You need to do all these different things. And while you're at it, here's a spoon. And I'm going to put a couple drops of precious oil in the spoon. Go to it. And the young man gets so anxious about the spoon, he's staring at the spoon all day. And he's shuffling around, staring at the spoon, staring and worrying about pouring out the oil by making some mistake. The king comes back and says, how did you enjoy the house? 
did you have the chance to get out in the yard and do some, um, take a look at the paintings that were out there? And the young man was mortified, thinking that he had spent all this time worried about the precious oil that was handed to him in the spoon. The king, being a kind man, said, well, you know what, I, the work that you did do for me, um, very good. Please come back again tomorrow. We'll, we'll carry on and do the same. The next day, the young man gets the spoon and the precious oil, and he goes about his work. He, this time, though, he looks up and looks all around, enjoys the artwork, enjoys the landscape, the fountains, the, the tapestries. The king comes back and says, fantastic. I, I'm so glad you, you accomplished so much today. Where's my spoon? And the idea of the fact that you have to be able to not only focus on the little things in life and focus on yourself and that minor detail, but also focus on the big things at the same time. And it's so challenging to be able to go back and forth between that, but that's part of growing up and that's part of gaining wisdom, that you're able to go back and forth between all the all the uh, craziness and chaos that goes on around you and be able to del uh, dwell with that and deal with it and then to go back to that spoon and make sure that you are taking care of yourself and the most precious things around you. It's a good book and again so much wisdom. Um, it's fiction though. It's not, it's not a self-help book um, but again sometimes the best the best help and the best inspiration comes from completely creative creative sources. I'm going to leave you with one last one last quote here and we're going back to the little prince. Here is my secret, a very simple secret. It is only with the heart that one can see rightly what is essential is invisible to the eye. And again that is from the little prince. I'm going to leave you with one last story. I remember being at a conference um, years ago and I was giving a presentation at this conference and a scientist of great global renown came up to me and said, you are far too excited about this food science stuff. And he turned around and left. And I sat there and scratched my head and was puzzled. I had just given a lecture and it was enthusiastic and it was fun and it was all about how do we inspire young people to do more um, with their career in food science and I just thought it hilarious after the fact that this this extremely famous elder food scientist said I was too enthusiastic. <laughs> if anything it reminded me that the most important thing in life is to be enthusiastic that I really enjoy food scientist and er, being a food scientist and my heart is in it. And that I think is why I'm enjoying doing all of this work with you, uh, whether that's through our virtual communities or whether it's through teaching in the live classroom. I enjoy food science. I enjoy food science education. And so I'm so excited that you're here and you've made it this far in this video. Um, as always, I always, say reach out if you've got questions, if you want to talk about having a sense of imagination. Um, but I hope you take some time now and reflect where are the things in your life that really get you excited and really spark your sense of imagination? Is it dance? Is it music? Is it being in nature? Is it spending time with creative people? Is it spending time being quiet in your own mind? Take some time and just think about it because again, being a good scientist is really about having an ima imagination that is able to connect so many different ideas and to put them together in a unique way. Take care, have fun, and we'll talk to you again soon.